Good evening. I'd like to call the regular City of Vacaville Parks and Recreation Commission meeting of February 1st, 2023 to order and ask Secretary Plancia Reyes to please call the roll. Commissioner Oz. Commissioner Baruman. Here. Commissioner Gutierrez. Commissioner McMahon. Here. Commissioner Shea. Vice Chair Thompson. Here. Chair Vasquez. Here. And Commissioner Gutierrez just walked in the door. <laughs> for the record. Um, okay, if everyone could please stand uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, um, we will go ahead and move on to agenda item three, approval of agenda. Um, everyone has had a chance to review it. Do we have any amendments to the agenda? No. Okay, so now do I have a motion? Oh, motion to approve. Second. So, Vice Chair Thompson and Commissioner, a second by Commissioner McMahon. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the agenda is approved. Um, approval of minutes. Um, so these will be, this will be an approval of the minutes from the regular Parks and Rec Commission meeting on January 4th, 2023, and the special meeting of the Parks and Recreation Commission on January 18th, 2023. Um, does anyone have any revisions or edits for either set of the minutes? I have a correction, Commission Chair. On the January 4th Commission meeting minutes, Page four, item 13, it says reports of the interim director. I have the same edit. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Another, at least we're consistent. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I, so that's the only change I have. Thank you. Okay. Any others? Okay. Do I have a motion to approve uh, the January 4 minutes as amended and January 18 as is? A motion to approve the minutes as published. Okay. And uh, so a motion by Gutier by McMahon and a second by Gutierrez. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Okay, so the minutes um, as amended are approved. Uh, moving on to uh, agenda item five, communications. Director Hubbard, do we have any communications for the commission tonight? None this month, thank you. And let's see, so we've got two presentations tonight. Uh, Director Hubbard, if you'd like to um, start with 6A. Absolutely. Every year we have our Recreation Expo where we highlight many of our programs and we come to the commission, present this information. And this year's theme is the Great Art Outdoors. And we have our Recreation Supervisor, Jen Baker <laughs> and Tiff <laughs> Tiffany Jen Wistie, oh, Jen, oh, <laughs> Tiffany West Western, Richie Western presenting this evening. Did you hear? A little birdie told us that this year's annual recreation expo will explore the great outdoors. It's true. We invite all of you to hike on over to and have a scavenger hunt through our fabulous summer camp offerings. This year's adventure will take place at the Lattice Community Center on Saturday, March 4th from 8 a.m. to noon. Nature explorers can meet program staff, win prizes, and participate in fun activities. This year's event is the first bloom of opportunity for families to register for summer camps and catch a savings of 10% off every summer camp. Online discounts will open the same day at 5 p.m. However, to take advantage of the payment plan, be sure to come in person. We <laughs> hope to see you there. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much. Are there any commissioner questions or comments? <laughs> Thank you so much for um, the lively entertainment and presentation. Um, so moving on to 6B, uh, Director Hubbard, if you'd like to introduce. Thank you, Commission Chair. Once again, this is an annual report from our theater, our consultant who runs our theater, the Venue Tech Company, and they, will, they have staff here tonight who will be presenting this item. Good evening. Thank you for inviting us to present 
sort of an annual report about the Vacaville Performing Arts Theater. For those of you I haven't met, my name's Judy Barquette. I'm the Executive Vice President of Venue Tech Management Group, and our company has had the privilege and honor of managing the Vacaville Performing Arts Theater for the city of Vacaville since 1998. Uh, we've gone through multiple you know, competitive processes every so many years, as is important for government agencies to do, and we're um, pleased that we've performed well enough that you've continued to employ our services. Um, with me, I wanna introduce some of our staff who are here tonight, just so you can put names with faces, and then our theater manager, Rachel Morgan, will give the presentation. This is Rachel Morgan. She's the, been our theater, she's been with Venue Tech for 10 years, and been the theater manager for eight. And then behind me is, wave when I say her name, is Kristen Jacobson. She's senior vice president, and she assists me with managing all the various projects that Venue Tech is responsible for. And then we also have Annie Muhlenbrook. Did I say your other name? <laughs> Morris. <laughs> Morris is easier. Annie's the technical director and production manager for the Vacaville Performing Arts Theater, also a Venue Tech employee. And then we didn't know, but we've got some of our staff who wanted to come and be the cheering section tonight. <laughs> so, what's Linda? We have Linda, who I think you guys might be familiar with because she does work with the Parks and Rec Department for some of the youth programs. And Daisy Clark, who's been, I believe, with our theater the longest. Of all the house, yeah. I mean, I'm the, the I'm the one that's been there longer than anybody else, but of all this in-house, front of house managers, Daisy, box office and front of house. And they work with all the audiences and folks here in the community. And so thank you again um, for having faith in us. And I'll let Rachel give you the update. Thank you again for allowing us to come and present tonight. Um, as Judy mentioned, uh, I have been with the theater for 10 years. Uh, the theater is coming up on its 30th anniversary in April of this year. The entire complex um, will turn 30 because it opened in 1993. Um, so this presentation just gives you an idea of how the facility is managed, our recent achievements, how we succeeded through the closures, our future goals, and our upcoming events. So the big picture, uh, the Vacaville Performing Arts Theater is city owned and managed by Venue Tech Management Group, as Judy mentioned, um, for the number of years that we have been here. Venue Tech Management Group works alongside supporting the Parks and Rec Department to manage the facility. Venue Tech Management Group has been in business for over 30 years, providing consultation and management to performing arts venues and producing professional events. Venue Tech currently manages several venues in California. The entire staff of the VPAT are Venue Tech employees, there are 12 employees, two full-time and 10 part-time. The city most recently entered into a five-year agreement with Venue Tech in 2018. Along with the management and staffing and production of rentals, Venue Tech works hand-in-hand -hand with the Parks and Recreation Department to develop and implement the operating budget, booking, production, and promotion of nationally touring artists in the annual season of show series. This is just VPAT by the numbers. For 2022, um, I do want to mention that we were closed in January and February of 2022. Um, so these numbers reflect us being open for a shortened year. Annually, the theater hosts approximately 150 performances or events. In 2022, with two months closed, VPAT hosted 85 performances. This number was up significantly from 2021, given the closures. We have approximately 50,000 people who enter the doors annually. In 2022, we saw just under 30,000 patrons and performers. The theater has a very active volunteer program with 30 volunteers that average 1,200 hours in 2022, supporting the front of house operations, such as ushering, ticket taking, and concessions. On average, there are 70 plus performing groups, acts, and event producers, 90% of those being local. In 2022, the theater had 50 plus performing groups with 90% of those remaining local groups. Our single largest user of the theater is the Vacaville Unified School District with at least 20 single events per year. A few of our achievements this past year, um, three of those being we were able to safely reopen. Um, we gained additional shuttered venue operators grant funding and the creation and recent release of the VPAT Arts Grant. 
So in 2022, we safely brought all of our clients, performers, patrons, and staff back to the theater. Staff, excuse me, safety remains our top priority um, with or without a pandemic. Um, so VPAT was very happy that we were able to reopen our doors to full capacity. And we were able to bring our entire team back for all of our upcoming events. In 2022, we successfully aided the city in receiving an initial, an initial SVOG award of $216,000 and then a supplemental award for $108,000, totaling just over $320,000. The funding helped offset theater expenses while the building was closed for rentals and the purchase of three major projects. That was the hydraulic fire curtain. We now have a rear throwing projector and moving lights. Our most recent achievement, just within the past couple of weeks, we were able to release the VPAT Arts Grant, which will benefit all of our clients over the next two years. The City Council approved $150,000 to support the Vacaville Arts community. The impact of the VPAT Arts Grant on Vacaville's overall cultural environment will be significant as the funds will allow artists and presenting organizations to expand their programs and services. Many schools and youth-oriented groups host events and performances at VPAT. The formation of the VPAT Arts Grant will be vital in ensuring that the arts remain an essential part of education and community in Vacaville. So this is a, a great opportunity for our clients that went through quite a bit during COVID with the closures to recoup some of these rental costs back for the next two years. I do wanna say that within the first week of us releasing the grant to our current rental clients, we received 15 applications we now have five new rental clients for the year. So that was just within the first week. So I expect this to be um, a really huge benefit to our local community. Some of our future goals include live streaming access to our rental clients as a revenue generating add-on service. Um, we've always known our proximity to the Air Force brings in quite a bit of families that are new to the area. Um, but with as many youth performances we have, they have families spread out everywhere. So during our closures, we were able to live stream a few events that were really successful. So no audience, but we were able to let anyone purchase, you know, tickets to watch it, as I'm sure many of you guys did as well. So we feel that this could be a huge benefit to our rental clients that have family members, friends that might want to be able to see their family members and friends perform, and now we have the access that we can provide that. Um, we have had a bit of damage to our patio, so that we are hoping to do a patio reconfiguration. Um, this will allow access from our patio into our lobby of our theater, so access to our restrooms um, and additional rental space for our rental clients. Um, during the closures, we were approached about the usage of our courtyard, which is right in the center of the other two buildings um, to do outdoor performances or movies, um, sort of a Shakespeare in the Park type um, events. So we're hoping that we can work through maybe offering that as now a rental space. And then just production value. Um, as I mentioned, the SVOG monies that allowed us to purchase new equipment are now increasing our client's production value. Some of our upcoming events, which you will see, I just went out a couple months because this, uh, our calendar's just busting at the seams. <laughs> um, a lot of this has to do with the closures and now everyone's getting back in and trying to get dates on the calendar. Um, we've already seen the impact of this VPAT Arts Grant, which is increasing our calendar right now. Um, we already have over 100 events booked for just this year. Um, you'll see that we have several upcoming shows that are sold out um, as far as April, and they've been sold out for many, many weeks. Um, so just to give you guys an idea of the variety of shows that we have, anything from local dance groups all the way to um, you know nationally touring comedians are coming through. And these are just our rental clients um, because we also provide a season of shows every year. So this season already, we've had three shows, two of those sold out. One was just last weekend. Um, and they're selling out weeks in advance. So people are ready, people are back. Um, and so we had Tower of Power in October, which sold out uh, the month prior. We had Big Head Todd in November. Last week we had the Marshall Tucker Band, which was sold out. And we have one final show remaining, which is 
Taylor Dane and Sheena Easton. Yes, and we are going to add a fifth. Right before the end of the fifth, one more. Don't know who yet. And these um, shows that we have uh, a part of the season, there is a commissioner that is on our committee. I believe that Reggie will talk about our most recent meeting um, that helps us decide what these shows are going to be. Um, so this really is a big asset to the local community because we're able to bring in these big name talents um, that are packed with with patrons that are excited to be able to see Tower of Power in back of all. And that's all I have. So if you have any questions. Are there any commissioner questions or comments? Mm, I got uh, Commissioner McMahon. Hi, thank you very much, Rachel, Judy. Thank you. Um, I've had the privilege of being that commissioner for the past two years. It's now someone else. Um, thank you so much. You uh, bring big names to Vacaville and we appreciate it. Um, it's exciting to see this last season that uh, three of the two shows are sold out. I'm hoping that the, the next show that we have is sold out as well. And it sounds like there's plans for um, adding an additional show, mm -hmm. which is always good. Um, my wife and I had the opportunity to go to the last show of Whose Line Is It Anyways? Um, hilarious. We need more of that in Vacaville. I know they're coming back, I think, mm -hmm. this month. Yes, and that show's been sold out sold for out. several yeah, weeks. It, it, the crowd loved that show. It was really good. Um, so more of that. I know that you guys are doing a great job there. What I know you brought up a couple different um, issues, the patio reconfiguration, the courtyard usage. What, um, what else does the theater need maintenance-wise? Um, back in the back, like the courtyard, um, is there electrical back there now? I know we've talked about that in the years past. Is there electrical okay. back there for evening events, or is that still not happen? For the patio? Is the patio the, the back area, or is that the courtyard? The one that's fenced? Yes. Is the patio. Okay. The courtyard is out in front where the fountain is. The patio. Do we have electrical back there? Yes, there is electrical. Okay. Yes. So we can host night events? Yes. Or... Okay. Absolutely. And that's one of the benefits of doing this reconfiguration is that right now there is no interior access from the patio into the lobby. So you have to exit the patio and then re-enter the side lobby entrance to use a restroom or to get to a concessions or you know be indoors um so one of the plans is to add those doors so that we then have direct access so there can be pre-show receptions galas Great. we do quite a bit um, but we've also talked about structuring it where some of our rental clients can use it as overflow for their performers so quite a bit of additional revenue options for that space Great. I know in the past, over the past few months or years, we've had issues with vandalism. Is that still an issue back there? It is. That's part of what we're hoping the reconfiguration will create more security in that space. Okay. It, Anything it else you need from into. the commission to help with maintenance wise, yeah, money, funds wise? Anymore. We're in pretty good shape. After yes. Good. Yes. Money. And the patio is on um, the agenda to be reconfigured. Um, so this is something that's in the works right now. Um, I know that Nemo has a long list. So we are on that list. And Reggie. Yeah, if, if I can piggyback on that, we do have an open CIP for that project. Um, it's like I said, it's on Nemo's plate, but uh, he has a lot on his plate right now. So it's not a top, top priority, but he's already put together some plans to make improvements to that back patio area. Um, and you're right, the, the vandalism and, and things like that are still an issue, but we hope to curb that with the additions that we're making. But we do have an open CIP for that uh, project. Um, thank you. And uh, thank you to you and your team. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. Um, I have one question. How do you all recruit volunteers and are there any incentives for volunteers? So the volunteers are actually City of Vacaville volunteers. So when they do come to any facility and they ask to volunteer, the packet has our facility on there. Um, Daisy Clark is here, is our volunteer coordinator. Um, she has a really great eye for patrons that look like they might be interested or will fit the bill, as well as some of our rental clients that bring in their own volunteers. We try to snag when they seem to be doing a really great job. Um, so the incentive really is, you know, you get to be a part of a fun and friendly, exciting environment. You know, you're seeing several different shows throughout the year. Um, you can kind of pick and choose what works for you and works for your schedule. Um, and then just depending on what the show is, you might need to go inside and make sure no one's taking photos. So that may give you an opportunity <laughs> to catch a song while you're in there. Um, but it's great because like I said, as City of Vacaville volunteers, they could walk into a community center and say, oh, I didn't realize I could be an usher at VPAT. And so we do get them trickling in that way too.
we would love a younger crowd of volunteers, um, but right now that's the process. So do they have to be 18 or over to they volunteer? Do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Judy and Rachel, for the presentation and thank for the you. team coming in and supporting. <laughs> um, yeah, it's always great to catch a show at VPAT. Um, no other questions or comments? All right. Well, thank you both thank for you. the presentation tonight. Thank you. Um, okay, moving on to agenda item seven, business from the floor. Um, so this is the time to address the commission with issues that are not on the agenda, um, but are within the commission's subject matter jurisdiction. Uh, there is a maximum of three minutes per speaker. Um, does anyone wish to address the commission tonight um, on a topic that's not on the agenda? The floor is yours for three minutes. <laughs> Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna go ahead and close um, business from the floor and move on to agenda item eight, uh, reports of Public Works <laughs> Superintendent David Jacobson. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, I have tonight with me, uh, this is the city's new park manager. Uh, I was uh, took a new position in Public Works maintenance back in October. And then in December, uh, Wallace here filled my vacant position. Um, he's been here 23 years uh, with the city of Vacaville. In all those years, he worked in park maintenance. So he has a real good understanding of managing and what the work needs to be done. So if you'll start seeing Wallace from, you know, going forward after tonight. Let me get my uh, presentation here. <clears throat> Okay, uh, last, it was last year, maybe six months ago, I came, uh, told you uh, about the vandalism event at Meadowlands Park restrooms. Uh, you know, I got burned, a lot of smoke damage. So that finally got finished uh, just, you know, about four or five weeks ago. So that, that's what it looks like now inside of you know, the, the roof uh, ceiling. You can see inside has been all painted. The um, walls were redone. And then we went ahead and took the opportunity, uh, epoxied the floors, uh, New fixtures, you know, all stainless steel. We got rid of the hand towels and our, we have uh, hand dryers in there now, which is nice. Uh, that hopefully will cut down on the combustibles. Um, so it turned out very nice. Um, then also a few months ago, I'd mentioned uh, Director Hubbard and I met with the folks from the softball little league, uh, maybe, maybe in the middle of summer. And they, uh, you know, let us know they wanted to start using Irene Larson Park for their activities in the spring, but it, they needed some um, help from us uh, setting up the fields. So on the left there, we uh, there's a Connex box that we dropped in there and then, you know, uh, basically screened it for aesthetics um, that they'll be able to use for their uh, storage for their activities. And then the dugouts on the right there, the, the, the field didn't have any, any way to close the field off. So if they prepped a field before a game and somebody could come in with their dog or another unauthorized user group. So they asked about gates and we did that. And then at the ends of the fields, they were just open. So we, the far, far side, we closed them both in and on the inside towards the parking lot, we added maintenance gates for the large mowers. So they'll be able to lock the fields for their um, for their activities in the spring. Uh, and then just a couple upcoming things. We're currently working on getting all the ball field lighting repairs uh, completed for the spring little league, uh, pony little league and uh, softball. And then uh, the replacement of the um, Beelard Park five to 12 playground. So we, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but through the assessment district process, we set aside funds to replace uh, playgrounds at a 20 year life expectancy. And uh, so this one is due. Um, Nemo helped uh, with selecting the, you know, the theme and the colors and things like that. Um, but that is the manufacturer. We've, we've purchased it. Um, it's going to be a city furnished item in the project. Um, and the, they've just let us know last week that it's ready to ship. So we're getting ready to send out some bid documents to have contractor come in and remove the old one. 
and then install the new one. So hopefully that will be done in the next, I don't know, eight to 10 weeks. And that concludes my update. Any questions? Any commissioner questions or comments? Okay. Um, I do have one um, question or, or comment. Um, thank you, David, for the presentation. Yes, and i um, looking forward to having Wallace come and present to us. Um, but there has been questions at the commission meetings about the um, playground replacement maintenance cycle. Um, is there a way maybe at a future meeting that you all could bring that and kind of show where the different parks are at in terms of equipment replacement? Um, I know specifically, I know Commissioner Shea asked about some of the parks on the 87 side. I think Beeler is probably one of those. Um, and then I'm trying to think of the other one, um, maybe Payton. I can't remember which one she was thinking of, but. Um. Yeah, I mean, I could probably, that was just something I'll come back for, uh, being, you know, Wallace is, uh, you know, new at this role, so it may be a little, um, but yeah, it's something I can uh, certainly um, maybe, uh, maybe simplify the spreadsheet, just to make it a little more like a timeline type thing instead yeah. of all the, the cost and depreciation. It's a lot there uh, to try to explain, but yeah, I can certainly do that. Yeah, that would be that would be great. I think it would probably answer some of the questions some of the commissioners have about um, equipment. Um, and mm -hmm. then I think probably like on the same token of that of not only equipment but um, pavement and repaving. Um, I know some of those parks on the eight seven side like Payton, Beelard, um, Some of the pavement is pretty beat up. Mm -hmm. um, and what I guess the schedule or cycle is for repaving. Um, what triggers it? Yeah, Other well, than an accident, yeah, which I would uh, hate for. So it, it kind of go back a little ways. I'm talking, this is before like 2008, 2007, when the city was really aggressive with the Slurry Seal pavement program. The parks, you know, back then it was Orchard, um, Payton, um, uh, Browns Valley, no, not Browns Valley, excuse me, uh, Ridgeview. The parks that had asphalt pavement didn't have concrete. Uh, they would get rehabbed and slurry sealed every five years as the city did its rotation through the doing the streets of the neighborhoods. And then, you know, the the crisis in 08 and 09 came and all the, you know, the cuts and the furloughs. And uh, for all those years, it didn't get done and it kind of fell behind. So now we're playing catch up. Um, we just did... Uh, but two years ago, we did Keating. That was a high priority one. And then last year we did Nelson. Um, Payton is on the list. I, I can, you know, we can check with engineering to see where they're at with it. But I mean, it's not being ignored. It's just, there's only so much time in the summer plus so, so much funding to get. And, and folks above me prioritize based on, uh, you know, other, other factors. I can't speak to those now, but yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely I could find out something on that for okay. sure. That would be that'd mm -hmm. be great. Um, any other commissioner questions or comments? No, none. Thank you so Got much, David time. and Wallace, for your time tonight. Thank you. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, moving on to nine A, um, Director Hubbard, would you like to introduce this item? Absolutely. Thank you, Commission Chair. After getting through the big ticket measure items or uh, prioritized items in the Park and Rec Master Plan last week, we thought. It'd be a good idea to come before the commission and present some of those smaller projects that are getting done. Um, I know we don't talk about them in detail under park planner reports that often, but maybe this is something we'll do quarterly to bring a little more detail on where we are with these projects. But there are a lot of measuring projects uh, out there and there's a lot of things happening with those projects. And sometimes they get, I don't want to say stalled, but if they're in between, um, you know, departments and they're reviewing the information uh, that could take, you know, a few weeks um, and then we don't have anything to report out on. But tonight we wanted to come and report out on where we are on some of these projects. So I'll turn it over to Nemo Gonzalez. Good evening, Chair, Vice Chair, Commissioners. I know how much you guys love my updates, so here I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a very visual person, so I brought some visuals with me. Um, and I am not managing all of these projects. So unfortunately, I'm going to be reading off the screen a little bit, but I'm happy to answer any questions on the tail end of this. This is also probably my public apology to Rachel for not getting to the patio, which we've been talking about for, <laughs> for a very long time. Um, the first project up on the screen is Corderos Park. Uh, construction documents have been completed. 
for phase two improvements and bidding and construction will start as early as spring of 2023. Uh, the park upgrades include a basketball court, three new picnic tables, uh, benches, and new trees. So this, this master plan that's up on the screen was uh, the original master plan that was prepared for phase one. And some of these amenities were not constructed due to lack of budget and those elements are coming in now in phase two. This is a uh, Trower Park. Uh, the scope for Trower Park has been expanded to include enhanced park theming and amenities, uh, such as newly paved uh, basketball courts, soccer goals, picnic shelters, tables, a zip line, nature play areas, a small uh, skate park, among other aesthetic and access improvements. Um, the park has started uh, construction documents and the project is likely to go out to bid either end of this year or beginning of 2024. And what I wanted to sort of preface about this master plan is we've encountered some challenges with the existing slope. And so it's not going to look exactly like this, but the amenities that are on the master plan will all be incorporated into the park. Uh, the next park is uh, Pheasant Country Park. And the proposed improvements for Pheasant Country include a picnic shelter, a uh, replacement of the basketball court um, from asphalt to concrete, uh, new bocce ball court, uh, improved picnic tables and fitness equipment, and some planting. And the bid sets are uh, under review by city staff, and they are anticipated to go to bid uh, as soon as we get staff approval, so early 2023. This is Alamo Creek Park and construction documents have just started for this park. Uh, the project scope includes improved decomposed granite walks, new site furniture, a new concrete basketball court, nature play, new signage, and grading improvements to prevent future erosion of the decomposed granite. And staff anticipates this project going out to bid end of 2023 or early 2024. This is Meadowlands Park, and the proposed improvements for Meadowlands include uh, new picnic tables, uh, basketball court seating, uh, completed loop path, an ac accessible swing, and an improved planting. Uh, the bid sets are in now and under review by city staff. So both Meadowlands and Pheasant Country are essentially completed from a design perspective and just awaiting city approval. So we anticipate construction bid and construction to start early 2023 for Meadowlands. And this is the last park, it's Sierra Vista. The project is currently in design development phase, so we're kind of in between master planning and construction documents. So we're uh, selecting um, some of the theming and the equipment and staff anticipates that we are going to start construction documents soon. And they should go through the fall or the winter and we anticipate this going out to bid either late 2023, but most likely early 2024. The scope of the project includes uh, a new, um, modular for uh, TGIF programming, uh, picnic shelters, uh, benches, backstops, um, and some play equipment. And that is all I got for you. Any questions? Any commissioner questions or comments? Um, commissioner Gutierrez. Question on the Meadowlands Park, and I apologize if I missed that. Um, I think when we were originally going through it, wasn't one of the plans to kind of redo the informal walkway or jogging area? I don't know what you call it, but it's a really informal kind of dirt walkway that goes around the park. But I thought revising that was part of the original. Yeah. Was it not a, a part of the original plan? I thought it was, but I don't see it here. So I just didn't know if that changed. Sure. I'll elaborate. So as part of the original master plan, um, uh, 
the city of Vacaville had a deal with the school district where they would essentially share amenities. And so the, the tail end of the park right up at the top of the sheet, um, that loop was never closed off because it was intended to access the school. And so when the school put up the fencing, that left kind of the park short a loop walk. And so there's existing walkways that go through three quarters of the park and then right at the fence line with the school, there is nothing there, it's just lawn. And so what we're doing is we're connecting uh, sort of the terminus point of this pathway at the back of the park with the sidewalk up at the parking. Got it. So it is included. Okay, yeah. got it. Thank you. And to elaborate a little bit on some of uh, Mary's um, uh, previous comment, um, in, in collaboration with Public Works, we, we expanded the scope a little bit. Um, there was a lot of concrete along sort of the front of the bathroom of this area, and we uh, increased the scope to replace all of that cracked concrete to make it more accessible. Um, I see there is signage. Um, once the loop is closed, will the signage include, I guess, like what the walking mileage is of that loop? I know some people like yeah. knowing that. I know, I think there's a sign up at Alamo Creek that if you do the loop so many times or something, the loop counts as something per mile. So. Yeah, we we are not including it as part of Meadowlands. We did discuss it for Sierra Vista. Um, and the reason for that is we have sort of control of what that sort of loop is, whereas this just kind of is what it is. The signage that we had intended for came out of uh, one necessity because we have a new sort of access point to the park, so it's just the park rules. But one of the things that came out of the community outreach is folks, you know, complaining about having to pick up dog poop, and so we're putting another sign indicating that everyone's responsible to pick up their own waste. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Commissioner McMahon. Thank you, Chair. Nemo, um, Trower Park, at one point, the tentative plan was um, indicated that there would be some sort of splash pad. Is that still part of that plan? There is no splash pad coming in for uh, Trower. There's a misting pad. A misting pad. Okay. Yeah, and I think we talked about it briefly, and at some point in the future, I'll put a presentation together sort of elaborating on the differences, but... Uh, the sort of shortcomings of the splash pad is that um, if we are ever, you know, in a year of drought, we wouldn't be able to use a splash pad because of the output. Um, the other thing is the equipment is very expensive. It's almost like pool equipment to make it be able to run year round where it essentially recycles the water and it kind of loops it and cleans it and then sort of reuses it. So, because those options are cost prohibitive, we went with the missing pad, which essentially doesn't put out enough water. Um, it's uh, to re or trigger those sort of code items, but still can get you wet. Perfect. Yeah, that's that's important here in Vacaville in the summertime. Can we expect? I, I know that um, a miss pad. Um, that's typically not in a neighborhood park, but can we expect that to expand in the city through the other districts and the other parks throughout the city? Is that is that where we're going now with that? Well, so I'm glad you brought up that question because we get sort of a lot of exceptions to parks uh, as of late. And so from a from a guidance perspective, the, the thing that we have to go off of is the Park and Rec Master Plan and what is and is not appropriate for certain parks. So that's kind of the baseline. And then occasionally we'll get someone who's advocating very strongly for one amenity or another. And so we sort of negotiate with them on that. And then the problem with those one-offs is that other people will start feeling like they're left out, like their neighborhood park doesn't have that amenity. And now there's two or three districts that do. So we want to you know, if we want to establish that as sort of something that's appropriate, I think the, the better route would be to sort of maybe amend the, the approved park and rec master plan, because then that makes it easier for us to sort of, that's our new baseline. Right. Um, but, but we've done it in the past. And so that to answer your question, yeah, we can sort of incorporate that, although that's not the baseline. So when we're negotiating with, say for instance, it's a developer who's responsible for building a park. If it's, they're looking at the park and rec master plan as well. And if it's not on the list, they're not gonna volunteer to sort of provide that. So, right. Yeah. 
it's a very popular um, feature at any yeah. park, especially here in the summertime, and it would be nice to see those spread throughout the city, um, right. um, just so all of our uh, youth can enjoy those. The other question I have, Nemo, is um, this is great. You know, we've got, um, you know, what do we got, six different parks throughout the city that are getting attention that they need um, over the years. Can we expect the same next year with different parks and throughout the districts? Can we expect, um, you know, here's these these parks have been named. Is this um, a trend that we can expect to see in the, the future? So what what made this possible is uh, Measure M uh, is funding all of these improvements. Um, and so the big question would be, will we have the funding? Uh, in terms of our process, uh, like we discussed with the bigger projects, um, it does indicate in the Park and Rec Master Plan that we need to come back to commission and propose projects and then have you guys and council help us uh, find funding to, to make these a reality. Well, great. It's it's a great trend. I'm glad we're here. And I hope we're talking about six different parks next year at this time um, throughout the city. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other commissioner questions or comments? Um, I do have one you mentioned. Um, oh, I don't know what meeting it was at, um, but Ridgeview and Cordero so were supposed to get soccer goals. Um, but I don't see that on the Cordero's plan. And I don't know if that's just because it was kind of something that's added outside of the scope of this yeah. project. Um, Indeed, we actually have way more efforts than just this. These are the Measure M district funded projects. So it's one neighborhood park per district. I actually have more parks to report on on the park planner report that weren't a part of this effort, but are separate efforts. Okay. This is, again, just an elaborate explanation to Rachel why I haven't gotten to the patio. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, seeing no other comments, um, we will go ahead. Thank you so much, Nemo, Thanks. for the presentation and the update on Measure M funded park, uh, district parks. Um, let's see. Moving on to uh, committee reports, agenda item 10. Um, Item A is play for all committee, Commissioner Shea, and I'm assuming someone from yes. staff will give us an update. <laughs> that committee met last night, and from what I hear, they are 95% sure they may be opening this weekend. Oh. But I think we've heard something similar to that before. So I will just say that with an asterisk, right? So they met, they, they're pretty sure that they would be able be available to open this weekend. They're still working with Public Works because Public Works has a punch list, a punch sheet that they have to check every box, make sure the restrooms are working, this is working, um, that's okay. Um, the roof doesn't leak, you know, um, lights are working and things like that. So they're working with Public Works to get that punch list completed and then they'll turn it over to the city. The Park and Rec Department won't open the park until we get the green light from Public Works. So once we get the green light from Public Works to open the park, we're going to open it. So that could, it could be tomorrow, but they're expecting, they said that they're expecting it to open this weekend. So we'll see. But if it does, we work with uh, Melody's group, our marketing team, to get the word out that it's open and it's ready for play. So awesome. that was their report from last night. Do you think you could let the commission know maybe via email? Yes, um, absolutely. When the park is open, that'd be great. Tracy will do that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Director Hubbard, for the update on Play for All. Um, very exciting. Um, 10B, Vice Chair Thompson is up next with um, Youth Sports Advisory Team updates. Yep. The YSAT meeting was held on January 26th, last Thursday, le led by Elizabeth. Um, pretty straightforward meeting um, as everyone's getting ready to kick off their seasons, um, going over some last minute um, things, getting in board rosters, making sure that the Parks and Rec staff have um, primary and secondary alternate contacts for each of the leagues. Um, deadlines, going over insurance documents, getting keys out, things like that. Um, walkthroughs or final walkthroughs with the different staff with the different leagues. Um, and then uh, Wallace was there and he updated us um, that the parks would be ready effective today. I believe that that is correct. I'm gonna look at not Wallace nodding in the back of the room. So thank you Wallace, your group for all your hard work to get all the fields um, ready to go for the leagues who will be kicking, kicking off. Most of them are kicking off their opening uh, this weekend with some tryouts, I believe. So um, Elizabeth, did I miss anything? Maybe just adding that most of the league's opening day is actually going to be March 4th. So mark your calendars. Perfect. Wow. Perfect. Yeah. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, we have practice on Saturday. So That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> We're ready for baseball season. Um, okay, and then Commissioner Oz for 10C on VPAT season of shows. So I'll pass the mic back to Director Hubbard. <laughs> Thank you, Commission Chair. Yeah, that group met last week and it was pretty much a, a learning process for some of us who are new to that committee. And Judy Bar Barquette gave a, a great overview of the process um, of how we select uh, you know, our talent for the theater, making sure it's a good fit, trying to get the best price um, as they wrote, rotate through like the Bay Area and some of the casinos, making sure that we d we're not uh, violating any radius clauses. So it was just, it was a good meeting just to understand the process of, of how we get the talent that comes to, to the theater. Um, and they've done a, good, a great job of that. And so we didn't select any acts or, or, or talent and at this meeting. Uh, we'll be doing that at the next meeting, but she did send out a list. And what we'll do is work as a group through email and uh, throw out names and talent and things that uh, we think that would fit in Vacaville for one and then select from the list that she sent out. Um, even if they're not on the list, we can make su suggestions as well. And um, we'll probably have more to report on next month on like how we're moving through this process of selecting the talent that comes through Vacaville. But it was, it was a very productive meeting. Um, that was the first time I sat on the meeting, so I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Um, sorry, I didn't ask this earlier. Any commissioner question or comments for Director Hubbard? <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much, Director Hubbard, for that update on VPAT. Um, and 10 D Arts Advisory Committee Commissioner Gutierrez will provide us with an update. Hi, yeah, we met on January 11th and um, that meeting was led by Melody. We had an Eagle Scout project. They actually did a presentation of some examples of a retaining wall paint project. It's actually gonna be along Markham Avenue. Um, there was no action that the committee needed to do, but it was nice to see the options. It's actually really exciting to see all of this art coming to to Vacaville, so, and it's really nice to see the youth getting um, involved. This, uh, we've had the Eagle Scouts a couple of times, I think, at this committee group, and very committed to the art in, in Vacaville, and it's exciting to see. Um, we also had the maintenance committee um, speak up. They had a recommendation for an art piece to be viewed by an expert for repair. Um, I think we, there were some concerns about making sure that we can preserve um, some of the originality of the piece and they just wanted to make sure that we had an expert take a second look uh, at the art so any repairs that we we're making doesn't damage anything to the original um, piece. And then there was an, a, rec a recommendation for it to be hung at the Ulatus Center as well. Um, there's also, we got to see the old dragon at Andrews Park. My kids call it the Dragon Park. Mm -hmm. um, there are some repairs needed there um, as well. So it was nice and it's nice to see some of these parks and the art that we come to, you know, love, get, get some love and, um, and get some much needed updating and repairs as well. Um, Vice Chair Bates and committee men member Shulman um, shared a piece that they had purchased at um, the Art League. Very nice piece, spent a whole whopping $50 on it. <laughs> um, but it was a really nice piece and that was nice to, to be able to see and they, um, that was presented as well. I'm not sure where that's going to be on the DVD. TBD on that one. And uh, we selected a member to serve on the VPAT season. And I didn't write down who that, but okay. Um, committee member self BD um, was selected for, for that and was probably at that meeting that you were at as well. And that's all that I have for the Arts Advisory Committee. All right, um, any questions for Commissioner Gutierrez on Arts Advisory? All right, thank you so much for the update. Um, okay, so agenda item 11, reports of park planner, Nemo Gonzalez. We'll have him back on the mic for an update um, on park projects. I told you I had more. Here we go. Uh, I do have a list of just a few more projects, but before I got to them, I was kind of hoping to turn it over to uh, Director Hubbard and have him update you on the goals for Ridgeview and Corderos. Uh, I know that they have been ordered and delivered 
and he might have some insight on the installation. Yes, they. Um, thank you, Nemo. They have an order. They are delivered. They're at the courtyard. We're working with the Public Works uh, Department um, to have those installed. We did ask that they give us a heads up um, when they install them so we can get some photos and we can show you guys kind of how they're getting installed and all that. So, no, they're here. They're ready to be installed. It's just a timing issue with weather um, and with uh, the resources that have them installed. So it should be... I'm not going to put Wallace on the spot, but it should be soon. I'll just say that. It should be soon, <laughs> but we will let you guys know. Do you know what the life cycle is on the nets? What a maintenance on the nets are? Uh, you typically, years? I mean, typically it's years? it's almost like tennis courts, like, the you know, tennis nets. When, once they go out or get bad and they get tattered, um, public works will go out and replace them. Yeah. Thank I'd say you. For, for any piece of equipment, um, sort of the unknown factor would be how heavily used it is. If it's if it's popular, which I anticipate it will be in this park, it might be, you know, sooner than even the manufacturer would indicate. So that's sort of the big unknown. But typically, they they will provide a warranty for. Usually, they round off so five or ten or fifteen or twenty years for any piece of equipment. So here are some additional uh, updates that I have for you guys. This is uh, Dreamers Park. Uh, the developer has completed the park uh, construction along with uh, added scope of a mini play area and a butterfly garden. Uh, these latest additions have not yet been accepted by the city, which is why the fence is still up. And we anticipate that the fence will be removed in late February or early March. This is a Lagoon Valley Park Archery. Uh, the archery at uh, Lagoon Valley was granted a per capita grant for 177000 the city has provided a, a Measure M funded grant match for an additional 44000 And the scope of this project includes rotating the archery for improved safety and updating some of the facilities. Uh, the Park and Rec Department hopes to once again offer programming uh, once the renovation is completed. And we anticipate that the project will be built by the end of the year because it has to be. The grant requires it to be completed by December 31st. Um, just down the road a bit, this is a Lagoon Valley dog park. It's an existing dog park, and it's slated to uh, increase in size and split into two separate uh, uh, parks, one for small dogs, one for large, and receive new fencing and other amenities. And the construction drawings are currently being processed through the city for comment. So this is a Nash Besso Park, and this park is located in the Brighton Landing subdivision and was completed in 2020. The original master plan accounted for a basketball court, which was not initially built, but staff has taken a creative measure of grouping this project with Corderos Park. So both this park and Corderos were designed by the same consultant. And Corderos, as part of that Measure M funded project, is getting a basketball court. And so we sort of took advantage of that effort to um, essentially build out that basketball court that we had always intended, but we didn't have the funding for initially. And so uh, one of the reasons that Corderos is kind of paused right now is we're waiting for this park to catch up so we can bid them together and have the same uh, contractor build, uh, build them and we get some cost savings. It's difficult to, when you have smaller projects to entice contractors to come in and work on that small piece, but because the scope is identical to Corderos and um, the consultant is the same. It's easy to sort of put all that package together and send it out. So we're anticipating that this will be built uh, this year. And so the basketball is the uh, area in the red. And that's the last graphic that I have, but I have one additional update, and that's for the adaptive and sensory play equipment. Uh, our department has uh, been leading an effort to incorporate more adaptive and sensory play equipment into existing parks, and we have identified parks that are in need of this type of accessible play features. Uh, our strategy is to make sure that uh, we distribute the equipment throughout the city. And so we've identified parks that have already received some of this equipment, mostly the newer parks. And uh, because of this uh, equipment is expensive, uh, one of the strategies that we sort of uh, came up with is piggybacking on other efforts like uh, playground uh, replacement. So one of the reasons that I was helping David Jacobson with Beelert is he already had a replacement project in the works. And I said, 
how do we incorporate, you know, that was one of the districts that was lacking some of this adaptive and sensory play equipment. And so I worked with a vendor to get a piece of equipment incorporated into that. So it wasn't just colors, but also making sure that it's accessible to, to all kids. Uh, and then one of the other efforts, obviously, is these Measure M funded projects. Um, so Meadowlands is also going to be receiving a, uh, an accessible swing as part of that effort. And so um, it's collaborative. We're working with the city manager's office and uh, Public Works to sort of make this happen. That was the last uh, update that I had for you. Any questions? Any commissioner questions or comments for Park Planner Gonzalez? Seeing none. All right. Well, thanks so much, Nemo, for all your updates tonight. Um, it's really appreciated by the commission. So thanks. They're, they're just quiet tonight. <laughs> thanks for that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nemo. <laughs> um, okay. So moving on to 12A reports of recreation manager Elizabeth Crisante with program updates. All right, thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, Commissioners. Good evening. Um, Tracy is going to pull up our report. So I think the first one we're going to talk about, um, we've had some exciting develop <clears throat> developments in the TGIF program. We actually brought our before school programming back. <clears throat> excuse me, before school care back. Um, we opened up four sites um, right after the winter break when the kids came back. We are hosting at Alamo, Browns Valley, Foxborough, and Meadowlands. Um, these sites were determined by surveys that went out pre-holidays um, to see what the interest levels were. And these were the four that um, had the most. Um, actual enrollment numbers have been a little bit slow. We do only have 26 families across those four sites for the before school care, um, but we're hoping that's going to pick up and we're going to keep at it. And it actually provides a nice opportunity for staff um, to kind of dig in and get used to doing that again. The after, uh, excuse me, the, be the before care is a typically a different vibe than the after school care. So it's a nice way for staff to ease into that. Um, <clears throat> staff are also working to uh, bring back the drop-in feature uh, for TGIF. That's not something we've offered since pre-COVID. Um, so that's very exciting. And it's perfect for families who don't need every day. Maybe they just need a couple hours here and there. Um, so that's going to be a really nice way to uh, get back to expanding our services. Uh, next slide, Tracy. And we have a new Valentine's Day event at McBride, Cupid's Chocolate Fountain Social. Um, so this will be on Valentine's Day at 3.30, uh, featuring what else? A chocolate fountain uh, that you can, you know, dip pretty much anything into. Um, pretzels, fruit, whatever, strawberries. Um, they're also going to have some live music, and they're going to do love song karaoke, sticking with that Valentine's Day theme. And then um, staff are also um, going to have a photo booth available, which is pretty cool. Um, and so uh, word on the street is that uh, our newest coordinator, Georgie Savulka, who you guys met a couple meetings ago, <clears throat> has connected with a semi-professional photographer who is coming in to provide the photo booth for free. And so we're hoping this will be kind of a relationship that has some longevity to it, um, which is really exciting because you guys know that uh, we can never get enough pictures of our programs to put in marketing and the guide. Um, and so we're, we're happy to do that. Um, so that'll be a fun thing. Uh, more to come on that with the feedback. Oh, also too, one more thing on, on that event. We are getting some um, support from the Elks Club as well. Um, they're doing some partial sponsorships, so that's really exciting. Um, and so we're hoping to get a few more uh, local businesses and nonprofits involved too. Um, ultimately, we'd like to be able to offer it completely free. Um, if we do have to charge a little bit, it'll obviously just be a nominal fee, so. Thanks, Tracy. Next slide now. Okay. All right. It is freezing cold outside, but we are already looking ahead to summer. So uh, we're starting our summer recruitment. Um, our goal is to always have everyone on board prior to June, preferably uh, by May, to do uh, trainings and uh, 
summer prep. So um, we are currently recruiting for rec spe recreation specialist ones, twos, threes, and aquatic specialist ones and twos. Um, not listed are also facility attendants, customer service representatives, um, pretty much in all of our areas we are recruiting. And this is not falling on deaf ears. You know that we've had staffing shortages for a while. So we are continuing to kind of persevere and get back to our pre-COVID service levels and be able to do that. So we need, we need staff for that. So um, we are working with HR to put on a hiring event on March 8th. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to do a few more um, along those lines uh, throughout the springtime. So uh, really trying to get out there and get where our potential um, candidates are and meet them, you know, halfway. So that's good. Thanks, Tracy. And then lastly, um, I did have the VPAT Arts Grant on here. Uh, Rachel talked about it a little bit in her presentation, but this is just very exciting and wanted to uh, make sure that you guys were aware and had all the details on it. So um, once again, just to kind of wrap it up, um, we were approved for 150,000 um, by the city council last fall um, to be able to provide grant opportunities to the local arts community um, for anyone who specifically wants to use uh, the Vacaville Performing Arts Theater. Um, so they do have to have um, an existing contract in place in terms of what those production costs look like, um, and then they can apply for the grant. So um, what's unique about this is that it's open to everyone, nonprofits and for-profits, um, we should be able to really um, open it up. So as Rachel mentioned, we have recently got 15 applications in. So we're in the process of reviewing those. So that's really exciting. And um, the, the grant sunsets um, in 2024. So I don't think we're gonna have any problem spending the money. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty exciting. Um, not something that we've been able to do in the past. Um, that is it. Are there any questions from the commission? Any commissioner questions or comments? I have Vice Chair Thompson. I just had a question about the TGIF. You mentioned the drop-in, which is a great service. I know that I've, my family sees that in the past. Um, but uh, I also know that um, probably pre-COVID times, some of the locations were impacted, so the drop-in was not available. Does that, am I putting two and two together, we're not at capacity at certain locations, or are there, yes. is our enrollment lower than it has been historically? Yeah, so we're still building our numbers okay. back up. Uh, post pre-COVID, um, we had gotten to a point where TGIF was, uh, several of our sites were at capacity, so that drop-in was no longer available. Um, and so, yes, that you're correct in that. So coming back from post-COVID, um, we've had challenges being able to fill our sites, uh, mainly due to the fact that we were having a staffing shortage. So what's nice now is that when we've been able to do some hiring throughout this last year, and we're comfortable enough with our ratios that we can bring back the drop-in option um, so that if you know people are popping in, it's still a manageable number and we're still within the safety, the safety ratios. Perfect. Thank yeah. you for the clarification. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Any other commissioner questions or comments? All right. Thank you so much, Thank Recreation you. Manager Crisante, for the updates. Um, 13A, reports of Director Hubbard, Department Updates. Uh, thank you, Commission Chair. I don't really have any updates, but I kind of have a comment. Uh, and as long as I've been uh, in the department, and I think you guys have you witnessed this when Nemo reports out, I don't think we've had this many park projects going on at one time, right? So this is really, really an exciting time for our department. And so I'm excited about that. I mean, the, the adaptive play equipment, the way that we're using our Measure M dollars, the dog park. I mean, like I said, I've been in this department, you know, 15 plus years, and we've never had this many projects going on in addition to all the programs that we have going on. So, you know, the staff are doing a great job. They're very busy. We're, you know, listening to the commission on the, what the needs are and things like that. So I think this is just a very exciting time for the department. And I'm really looking forward to this year because I think we're going to finally start to see some dirt moving in some of these projects too. So it's going to be exciting. So I just wanted to, to throw that out there. So thank you. Thank you. Um, it is really, really exciting. Um, and I'm sure we'd probably have some commissioners who'd be willing to put on some construction hats and get out there with their shovels for photo ops, you know, for kickoff. No? Okay. Um, yes, it's it's really exciting. I know. I'm sure everybody's is excited too. So thank you so much.
um, for those updates. I'm really looking forward to seeing Measure M funds put to use. Uh, okay, so moving on to reports of commission, we have Commissioner Oz absent, Commissioner Baruman. Uh, thank you to the staff with the great reports. You're great to hear everything that's starting to flourish, like Fiddle and what Director Hubbard had mentioned. It's good to see that's happening. I know Nemo's been busy. I mean, it's just awesome that, you know, spring's coming around and hopefully things will start opening up. And I'd like to hear about the dog parks at Lagoon Valley. It's going to be, that'll be well used. I'm sure the little dogs will be going fine. But no, uh, awesome to hear everything that's going great. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Berman. Uh, Commissioner Gutierrez. Um, Ditto. Uh, thank you, everyone, for the presentations. Nemo, I always appreciate the visuals. I'm also a very visual um, person. And congratulations on your promotion, Wallace, and look forward to working with you in the future. Um, yeah, excited. I joined this commission uh, smack dab in the middle of COVID, so there wasn't a lot going on at that time. So it's really, really nice to see everyone getting back out and seeing these improvements happening um, you know, in our parks and seeing people enjoy a lot of the programs and seeing them come back um, as well. That's it for me. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Gutierrez, Commissioner McMahon. Thank you, Chair. Um, a couple things. I, I do. Um, it is exciting to see all these projects taking place, um, and it sounds like they're going to be taking place here very soon and uh, with some completion by the end of the year. So that's exciting. And I, I do hope that we uh, continue this into the, the following years to uh, um, come. I also want to say thank you to Tom Filippi and his team for the Play for All Park. Um, that park has been um, in the works for 10 plus years. You know, they work very hard um, planning and fundraising. And uh, we are, sounds like hours or days away from uh, that being turned over to the city and being opened. And it's, um, I, I get to drive by that park nearly every day going to work. and. It's a beautiful park. It's um, it is just beautiful, and I know the community is going to benefit from it, and they're they're really looking forward to using that. So, thank you, Mr. Filippi, and all of uh, those team members that helped with that over the past ten years. Um, Backville thanks you, and uh, it's going to be enjoyed for many generations to come. We did meet. Uh, back did meet. The Vacaville Arts and Culture Alliance did meet on January the eighteenth, and it was well attended by different um, community members um throughout the city um we talked about arts week which is scheduled right now for september 15th through the 26th there's a possibility of that being shortened um, at a future meeting we'll talk about that um, but those are the dates right now um, there's a lot going on in september arts and ag festival is scheduled for september 13th through the 17th the jazz festival is scheduled for september 13th through the 17th as well um, so a lot of different events going on during that time frame. I do have one request that was uh, brought up by many of the members there. They would like to do uh, different concerts in the Andrews Park area. The, the issue with it is, is most of the audience will sit up on the grass, the shaded area. The performers sit down on the concrete area. There's no shade there. So it was brought up if we could possibly address or uh, um, explore some sort of um, shade sale, I guess, for lack of better words, um, out there that would really help with performances and especially for the performers. Um, I've been out there on a September afternoon and it was incredibly hot uh, where we were under a shade tree. The young performers were out there and it was just um, almost unbearable for them. And I, I'm not a musician, but uh, I understand that um, when the heat um, hits those instruments, they just are out of tune and it things don't work the way they're supposed to. So if we could look into that, possibly, I, I don't know, um, you know, if we have the funding for that, but if we can look into that, um, I think that would be greatly appreciated by, by those people. And it would also be um, used throughout the summer as well as farmer's market and, and other events. So uh, if we can look into that, um, thank you to the staff. I know you guys are, are working hard out there. Uh, we're getting into a, another busy season with the uh, Recreation um, Expo coming up. Um, you all do a great job. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you. All right. Thank you, Commissioner McMahon, uh, Vice Chair Thompson. Thank you. Um, I wanted to welcome uh, Park Manager Wallace, um, and congratulations on your promotion, and thank you for all of your hard work to get the fields ready. I am super excited. Um, 
my family is a sports family. Um, opening day coming up uh, roughly 30 days from today um, and having all those fields um, out there through the YSAT meeting. Um, it sounds like enrollment in all the leagues is nearly double what it was pre-COVID. So um, that's incredible I and mean, exciting to see. Um, also, thank you, Nemo for, Nemo, for all of your reports and the rest of the staff for all of your hard work and all these projects, getting them um, going. So um, in addition to getting kids and youth out there on the fields, I'm excited to see all these projects come to fruition. That's, uh, yeah. All right, thank you so much, Vice Chair Thompson. Um, I know we talked about when we first got here, it's like, wow, we were just here. Um, we had two meetings in January. Um, and, you know, for the start of 2023, January really just flew by. Um, but uh, I did want to just acknowledge I was able to attend the Martin Luther King event um, on MLK Day. And a lot of folks in this room were here. And um, there's a really special person in this room and on this commission that helped organize the event. Um, uh, Commissioner Gutierrez, who identified a need for Vacaville. Um, this was our third annual, so three years ago in 2020, um, that, uh, you know, we needed a space to acknowledge community, acknowledge, um, uh, bring the community together and acknowledge um, unity and peace and how to move forward and, and serve in, um, you know, Martin Luther King's um, um, history and so I just appreciate you for putting that on and we had um, a lot of help um, with uh, moving the events from the outdoor rains into indoors at Senior McBride so thank you to Melody for for helping uh, Miss Gutierrez uh, work that event event and make it happen um, and it was packed it was packed I know I think almost all of you were there but I didn't get to see all of you um, but it was it was a really great event and um, uh, looking forward to what Commissioner Gutierrez is going to do with that event moving forward and in the future um, in 2024 and beyond. No pressure, no pressure, none, none, but I'll be there in 2024. So I'll see you then. Um, we are also gearing up for baseball. So super excited for baseball. And, and yes, thank you, Wallace and your crew for getting the fields ready. Um, having been on the league boards in the past, I know it's a, a lot of work. So um, looking forward to baseball season. It's the best season of the year. <laughs> Um, a couple of things that came up for me when we were reading, uh, when I was reading the minutes, um, if the commission could get the slides from the budget presentation, I think Commissioner Oz asked for those. I don't know if we're able to do that. You did? Oh, God. Okay, I will look then again. Um, I will make sure that I sent it. Sorry, I didn't hit my mic, but I will make sure that I sent okay. it. Okay. Oh, you did? You think so? Okay, I'll look again. Um, and then the, something else that came up was um, someone from the public had talked about having some sort of flow chart of like what, um, how, how these kind of park master plans come to fruition. Um, and it would be cool to maybe possibly, well, not to add more to the staff's um, plate and list, um, but to maybe do like a condensed version of the roadmap that we did back in 2020, 2021-ish um, under Director Walker, um, where there, we had specific topics at different meetings throughout that commission year. Um, but just trying to think about with potentially new commissioners coming on board in April, um, what something like that could look like in a more condensed version or way. Um, so folks understand funding and, um, and how master plans can come to fruition and we start seeing work being done, so. Just a thought. Um, and with that, I have no other questions or comments. Um, and we will go ahead and adjourn the regular meeting of the uh, adjourn to the regular meeting on Wednesday, March 1st, 2023 at 6 p.m. Good night, Vacaville. <laughs>